Over in Malaysia, the country's 15th general election has brought it to uncharted waters with a hung parliament. While discussions are ongoing for a coalition government, analysts expect the uncertainty to hit investor sentiment and the economy in the short term. Securities research firm CGS CIMB has predicted that a hung parliament could lead to the market correcting on fears over political uncertainty. Investors may rush to adjust their portfolios after pricing in for a government formed by the Barisan Nasional. Baso Malaysia's KLCI has gained about 4% over the last month and a half ahead of the polls. Now, while Malaysia's economy remains fundamentally strong, experts expect significant policy changes after the dust settles over the leadership issue. Some economists expect more infrastructure spending to help improve the delivery of essential public services such as education and healthcare. Meanwhile, the new government is expected to focus on raising the quality of investment flows into the country. And this may include in areas such as renewable energy and sustainability as part of Malaysia's commitment to addressing climate change. For our conversation, we are joined by Corey Yuling. She is Southeast Asia Research Director at Sergi Anam Advisors, and she's joining us from KL. So Yuling, just looking at the hung parliament situation, what does this mean about the way that Malaysia is going to be dealing with the immediate economic priorities at the moment? Hi, morning, April. I think the issues on Malaysia are really uh, for the political coalitions to come together um, and see who's going to form the government. So that process is, is uh, people are just waiting for that. Um, I think they all have uh, the similar uh, eye on the key issues uh, like inflation running at 5% per annum, uh, food costs rising faster than 10%, ringgit has been falling, underemployment for the youth. Um, so we, we should expect uh, some similarities uh, on that ground clearly because I think the electorate uh, have, have pretty um, uh, ongoing issues on that. Of course, on the positive front, um, if we look at the farmer zone, uh, they're very happy because uh, things like uh, palm oil commodity prices are really at uh, unprecedented and remain at very high levels. So that's that's a positive. Um, does it also apply? I mean, these constant, uh, you know, economic policies. Does it also apply to uh, all the coalitions and what we are likely to see, given the horse trading and the impact potentially on the budget uh, in the future? Well, uh, the interesting thing is, uh, you know, uh, the budget actually was uh, prepared by Barisan National, uh, who uh, really didn't do very well um, in the polls. I think we've, we've all seen that um, was a bit of a negative surprise. Um, so the it will need to be reworked um, by whoever is in, uh, whether it's uh, obviously, who knows if it's going to be Pakatan Harapan led or whether uh, we have the situation of essentially getting back to uh, something like the, uh, you know, Muhyiddin uh, kind of prime ministerships or, or somebody else. It just looks as though uh, there's going to be a bit of a deja vu or uh, perhaps a change. Um, so this will be uh, up to the rulers to help facilitate uh, this process. But um, I think if we look at the manifestos, um, they had uh, similar promises, uh, very big ticket items. Um, and of course, uh, the context is that Malaysian uh, Federal expenditures have been um, under deficit for a long time since the Asian financial crisis in the late 90s. So uh, questions do arise on the funding uh, going forward for Malaysia. And I think they need to be careful um, about this. All right. I mean, all these big questions, what you're alluding to is the prolonging of political uncertainty. How do you think foreign investors are viewing this? I think they will have to be. Um, viewing the hung uh, parliament, um, perhaps they'll be a bit unexpected on it. I think in within Malaysia, um, at least the understanding of this was pretty clear in the last two weeks. Of course, international markets uh, might find this a surprise. Um, but I think today they will be submitting um, on what's who's going to be uh, offering what kind of numbers and uh, who's going to be a prime minister. The rulers, I suspect, will try to get this done um, uh, faster rather than slower. Of course, if we look at the actual election results, uh, there are um, some issues about alliance forming that seem to be a bit worrying because 
Um, if we look at the underlying parties, and this is below the coalition level, uh, you know, we we do see that Pakatan Harapan is the biggest coalition, and then we have the Perikatan uh, after that. But if you look at the underlying components of it, we do have uh, the Islamic Party as the biggest uh, political party right now, and the second one being uh, the uh, DAP, which is um, essentially um, Chinese ethnic dominated. So this points to a very heavy polarization, and I think the market will be looking at this um, with a bit of caution. And uh, there are, of course, concerns that uh, this might make coalition forming uh, a bit difficult because um, the two biggest parties are really um, seen as at the extremes of the spectrum. Right. So coming back to something that we touched on earlier is, will this polarization actually make it more difficult for structural reforms to be put in place in Malaysia? Uh, you talked about this, the country's fiscal position is of concern, and there's also that reliance on fossil fuel demand. Does this, uh, you know, maybe push the goalpost a little bit in the future? Well, the fiscal situation is interesting. I mean, Malaysia, they, they have been, uh, at least if we if we pick up on the last budget and assume that there's, it's going to remain a touch point uh, for the new government, um, is that they plan to spend a lot more on development expenditure. Um, is, is that going to happen? If we look at the manifestos, uh, you know, the big ticket item that is actually a cross board, interestingly, is that they want to double uh, health uh, health spending. So that's a 40 billion ringgit promise. Uh, this is some from, uh, you know, some estimates. Uh, just to give you the context, I mean, the federal government's total expenditure in 2021 last year was around 300 billion. So you get the size, you, you know, you get a sense of the size of these things. Um, you know, uh, I think if we look at the Pakatan, Harapan and, and PN, Perikatan, um, they have promised something like 50, 60 billion worth of, of spending uh, in that regard. Uh, Barisan National was even bigger at 100 billion. If we take, uh, you know, a high end uh, estimate of what they have as a big ticket item of a very kind of populist, um, assistive basic income for all Malaysian households to re reach at least ringgit 2,200 um, per month. So, you know, we do see um, general um, caution among e economists and analysts that with this kind of um, political situation, that there will be a lot of uh, populist. Policies. I mean, of course, if you look at Pakatan Harapan, they're also talking about this um, reducing toll rates. So, um, you know, this could be a very big ticket item which uh, hasn't been, um, you know, put in into a lot of estimates right now. Um, and how are they going to have a sustainable financing? So I think there'll be a lot of uh, conversations and interest on that. I mean, we've seen in other countries when they do uh, unsustainable things, um, there is uh, adjustment and discussion to be made. Um, otherwise, markets and uh, even currency uh, mm. may be a bit spooked. Yeah, casting doubt on fiscal consolidation in Malaysia and potentially what that would mean for the ringgit. Ling, great chatting with you. Thank you for helping us understand all these issues. Corey Ling is Southeast Asia Research Director at Sergi Anam Advisors.